This program is presented by University of California Television. Like what you learn? Visit our website or follow us on Facebook and Twitter to keep up with the latest UCTV programs. The people that live in the canal are a ragtag group of people from all walks of life, but the majority of them are deported from the United States. Most are men, although some are women, and they have no ties to Tijuana in general. They might have been born in Sonora or Guerrero, and they don't want to go back there. They lived maybe in the U.S. their entire lives. So it's really sad. Many of them don't have any identification. Some of them don't even speak Spanish. And so they're homeless and they trickle down to the canal because there's nowhere else for them to go. HIV AIDS in San Diego and what's called VIH SIDA in Tijuana in many ways are very similar. The virus concentrates in the same groups on both sides of the border. But what's different is the response and the speed at which the virus is spreading through these different populations. So in Tijuana, no one really knew exactly where the virus was. And you have to know that to have an effective response to end epidemics. So the UCSD group came in and started to carefully look at each of these populations that have high concentrations of the virus, men who have sex with men, transgender women, sex workers, and in particular, people who shoot heroin and other drugs and share their syringes. Proyecto Al Cuete is a cohort study. And in epi speak, that basically means you're following a group of people over time. You know, and the people that are the classical trained epidemiologists, they get people to fill out surveys and mail them in once a year. And they get to call them and say, oh, it's time for your visit. Can you come in and give us all these specimens? And people do it. Um, we have a totally different population. Many of them, in fact several hundred, are living in the Tijuana River Canal at any given time. So when you have a study like this, you need to have staff that can go out in the field and be accepted by a population that generally is very suspicious of authorities. And you need to be able to track these people over time um, to be able to tell their stories so that you can um, use those data to argue for more interventions. Well, basically, this clinic is from staff from El Cuete. And what we do is we start coming to the canal to reach out for our participants. And I find out that while my staff is, you know, reaching out for participants, and I was like, I can do something to help. Patty Gonzalez is a doctor from Tijuana, and she grew up there, and she lives in both worlds. She works at UCSD. In Tijuana, she has her own clinic, and she runs the clinic for the El Cuete project. And she also does a free Friday clinic in the canal for many of the people there who never want to go see a doctor. 
She takes them, you know, one at a time and inspects any wounds they have and listens to their chests and does the odd HIV test and uh, is aware that she's only scratching the surface in terms of the care they need. But it's, it's a very important thing to be doing because um, symbolically it's meant that the medical community has actually gone to the canal. So it breaks down a traditional barrier that may exist between people who are destitute and marginalized and medical care. ¿De dónde te deportaron? De Anaheim, California. Anaheim. Well, down here is, a, well, you see it's like the, um, it's like a community of like IV drugs users, people who inject drugs. Um, they live here, they eat here, they bath here. Por lo menos eso está muy bien. Ok. Qué bueno que le di la sonrisa. Eso por lo menos le digo, por lo menos eso está bien. Entonces espérese aquí que le traigan la medicina. Ándale pues. Que tengan buenas tardes y Dios la bendiga. Ándale pues. Mainly they have, you know, a skin condition and skin infections. We're seeing like uh, abscesses, with, they have diarrheas, they have, um, you know, gastroenteritis and, uh, but lately we've been seeing a lot of lesions or like necrotic lesions on their skin and probably it's because a product of the drugs that they've been using. Sí, y si se rasca de ahí se lo lleva para otro lado. Ya no se recuerda. My resources are really limited, so I find it that sometimes there are people that just need like a, my hand to be touching them, but usually I clean wounds and I give hydration solutions and basically first aid. Where Patty sets up is so fetid, there is defecation all around the pillars that hold the bridge that cross the canal itself, and they put lye on it to try to deal with it. The stench is enough to make anyone run. The water that passes by is you know, raw sewage some of the time. The first time that I came here, that was I couldn't stand like maybe five minutes because I was like getting this bad odor. But right now we're, we've been coming every week and I mean, it's familiar. You get familiar to this smell, and it's like it's your environment, so you notice. Se va a esperar diez minutitos. Claro que sí. Para que esté su resultado, y le voy a dar un papelito con su nombre, la fecha del día de hoy y su resultado. Claro. Gracias. We have here my team, our team, el cuarto team, and we have two nurses and. Yadira, who's the field coordinator, she has background and she's a psychologist. Uh, Susie is my uh, star outreach health promotora. Susie is probably my most favorite uh, of our field staff. She has these luminous eyes and um, this smile that could light up a whole room. <laughs> And when I first met her, I noticed that she had a disfigured arm and she was very embarrassed about it and trying to cover it up. And I said, hey, you know what? That's a badge of honor. Pues yo nunca pensé trabajar en esto. Hace 14 años, este, yo salí este, positiva de VIH SIDA. Este, porque también fui adicta, usé heroína y todo tipo de drogas, empecé a usar a los 11, 12 años de edad. Este, y nunca pensé que hoy en día trabajara yo para esto, para darle mensaje a personas que andan como yo algún día anduve, a darles información de lo que es el VIH SIDA. No sabía en mi cuerpo. Al huevo que me da tristeza ver todo esto porque aquí viví y soy parte de esto también. Hoy en día estoy de este lado. Pero han pasado años, ya 14 años limpia y sigo viendo que está peor todo esto que abajo. Al menos de venir a darles el mensaje, cómo laven sus jeringas, compartir mi experiencia cuando viví aquí, hacer algo, aunque sea esa mínima parte de mí hacia, hacia mi Tijuana, hacia la gente que viene de otras partes. 
Día, mijo. Permiso. Buenos días. Look, Susie, you have a PhD in life. I said, you are my eyes and my ears for this study. And without you, we wouldn't be having people come back. Buenos días, muchachos. We rely on the big hearts of people that work with us to teach us about what works and what doesn't work and give us access to this community. And they are part of that community oftentimes. Hola. They are ex-drug users, they're sex workers, they're clients. All of the types of people that we study participate in the development of the, the interventions and, and in the actual conduct of the intervention. Without them, this wouldn't work. Susie's also an example of what's possible. So much of what we saw is, and what we're documenting, is bleak and it's sad and there's a tragedy to it. And we watched many people who we followed over time become infected and we watched some people die from AIDS who need not have died from AIDS in this era when good antiretroviral drugs exist and are technically freely available in Mexico. <laughs> Susie's undetectable, she's healthy, she's robust, and she's an inspiration for people who are in her situation. Welcome to the little Preven Casita. The Preven Casita means little prevention house. This is actually the place where we have all of our research projects based. Um, Tom's studies, my studies are all here. And it's a very busy, lively place where we have people cycling in and out all day long. Today we're having a mural painted. And, um, you know, this is a research project studying HIV, but um, it's also a place where people like to feel is their home. And they uh, wanted to paint the walls because it wasn't pretty. And I said, well, why don't we create an art day? And so uh, we had some of the participants in our project volunteer to do some art. And so it's just a fun way to express themselves and to make them feel like real people. People think of the border as a wall. And yes, we've built a wall. And that's not to my liking, but that's the way it is. Despite that, this is one large continuous community. And there really is interaction across the border and the health problems that exist in Mexico are going to be a health problems that we have here in San Diego. So UCSD has to partner with Mexico since they are our neighbors in order to try to solve some of these problems. We're in an ideal situation and place to be able to do that.